goal is a Joel Ransom extension agronomist for cereal crops. I'm housed in the plant science department at NDSU. I've been asked to give an update on small grain varieties. Uh, before I go into the details of selecting a new variety, I want to talk a bit about the weather this year. Um, as we're all aware that uh, this spring started out to be cooler and wet and caused a delay in planting. And I think probably on average, we're about two weeks later than normal in planting. For uh, reference in my discussions, I'm gonna use the first of May as a planting date. I think ideally, if we could plant before that, uh, that would be more optimal for yield potential development for small grains because of the uh, preference that they have for a cool weather. I think rainfall has been more or less adequate. Uh, we have cer certainly had periods where uh, it was dry and the surface of the soil has been dry. Uh, but I think if we uh, look at the overall uh, period between 1st of May and now, uh, there's probably been adequate uh, moisture and hasn't been a lot of uh, moisture stress on the developing small grain crops. I think temperature is the bigger story. On average, actually, from the 1st of May to the 1st of July, we're more or less normal, but uh, averages don't tell the whole story. And in fact, this graph that shows the uh, daily uh, average temperatures uh, at Prosper, which would be the end on location closest to Castleton, you can see that uh, after the middle of May, that uh, more often than not, the temperatures have been above normal. I think any temperatures below 70 degrees are not uh, harmful or not negatively impacting the development of the small grain crop, but we can see that there are probably about two weeks worth of, of daily weather that was uh, suboptimal for uh, yield potential development. In fact, if we look at the uh, crop, uh, this is from a plot near uh, Castleton, uh, you can see that it uh, even at heading is about a, a foot shorter than normal. Um, often get a question of, you know, does short stature mean short yield? And the answer is there's no direct correlation between height and yield. Uh, but certainly if there's been stress that has caused, uh, and I think the stress in this case would have been uh, heat stress, uh, has caused the plant to be short, it's possible that some of the yield components were equally affected. In fact, if we look a little closer at this, this plot, we can see that it hasn't filled in real well, uh, probably indicating that uh, tillers have not uh, developed fully. And even though uh, this, this poor uh, covering might have been associated with less than optimum uh, stand establishment. But if we pull out a few plants, you can see that there have, are some tillers that did not develop, suggesting that there will uh, conditions were not ideal for uh, vegetative development. We look at spike size. The spike size actually wasn't too different than normal. And, um, and so I think that there is the potential to certainly fill these spikes and maybe add some additional uh, kernels than we'd normally get in a spike if conditions are favorable uh, from now until uh, the end of grain filling. Now, as was mentioned, I was to give you some uh, thoughts about uh, varietal selection. And, you know, it's really variety, environment, and management are determining factors for yield. And we can't control the environment. And if we're using best practices, uh, then variety becomes really key to the success of uh, a small grain production enterprise. Now, how do we select a variety, given the fact that we have so many of them? In fact, in our uh, small uh, our spring wheat variety trials, we have about 50 entries every year. And, and of those 50, uh, I think we have 18 that have, uh, are, are new that were either not tested last year or, uh, or the first time tested last year and, uh, or the first time tested this year. Since environment is so critical, then the question would be, how do we select a variety that's going to perform well in an environment that we're not even sure what it's going to be like? And I think the answer to that is that we use as much data as possible that includes multiple environments and multiple years in order to select varieties that are going to be stable across a, a whole range of, of, of environments. So the recommendation would be use 
um, you know, use the means over multiple locations in your selection process for yield. And certainly if uh, multiple years are available, multiple years with multiple locations are going to be even more powerful than just multiple locations and avoid making a selection based on one year's data in one location, even if that location is nearest your farm. Don't forget the importance of, of lodging. We maintain in our uh, publications information about the uh, lodging potential of the varieties that are released, that are at least that we're testing. These publications are available either online or through uh, the hard copy in our selection guide. Also, don't forget the importance of disease resistance. Bacterial leaf streak was a, a big problem last year, and this is a disease that can't be controlled by fungicide. So really the only tool we have is to control it with uh, varietal or genetic resistance. And this is an aerial view of one of our experiments last year, and you can see these brown plots. This is not because they're earlier in maturing, but actually because they've been decimated by bacterial leaf streak. And I think in this uh, location that the more susceptible varieties yielded about 20 bushels less than those that had some moderate level of, uh, of resistance. So even though we don't have um, complete resistance in any of the varieties, uh, I would recommend that in any variety that you select, given the prevalence of bacterial leaf streak, that uh, you um, avoid using any variety that is considered uh, susceptible. This is just another picture of uh, bacterial leaf streak uh, and, the decent, and the incredible uh, impact that it had on some of the more susceptible varieties last year. And finally, don't forget the importance of uh, protein. Uh, given a lot of discussion or weight to the importance of looking at yield and looking at yield over multiple locations, protein often will impact the price that is uh, obtained at the elevator. Now, we haven't had significant discounts or premiums in the last few years, but that doesn't mean that uh, it won't be an issue in the future. And I think that uh, we have seen that those varieties that are kind of above average for protein and above average for yield tend to be the ones that uh, are the most profitable produce year after year uh, when compared with uh, a variety that might have high yield potential but very low uh, protein content. And we feel this is so important that we've added a feature to our varietal selection tool, uh, online varietal selection tool that has uh, a little option to calculate gross value. And it does give the user the opportunity to input uh, a price for the bushel at the market, as well as uh, an, an anticipated premium or discount. So with that, I uh, thanks for joining in. I wish I was uh, able to uh, see you face to face and uh, wish that uh, I was actually out in the field rather than sitting in my home uh, making this presentation. I would uh, conclude by saying that there are lots of good options for, for varieties in spring wheat, but more than we ever have. And they do offer some uh, significant advantages. I don't think there's one variety that is going to have all of the characteristics that you want. Uh, but I think with the data that is available and uh, being produced by uh, these different research extension centers, and here by the main campus that uh, you can be guided in choosing a variety that will work well for you and be profitable for your enterprise. Let's hope the remainder of the season is favorable for yield development. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm.